He is risen. He is risen. I have wanted to do that for a long, long time. Brothers and sisters, we thank and praise our God that we are actually able to gather here tonight as a family of believers. So to God be the glory, and we praise his name. However, that also means that we are supposed to follow some guidelines uh, given to us by our government. So according to the fifth commandment, we don't want to cause any harm to anyone. According to the fourth commandment, we do want to obey our government. Uh, one of the guidelines that, well, you have them all posted for you as you came in, uh, but there is one that they are suggesting, and that is that we do not sing. Uh, the reason for this is you can project your voice a lot farther than when you speak, and the fear is, and there is some research to back it up, that this spreads the COVID virus um, more easily. So with that in mind, I would ask you this evening, hum. Hum as loudly as you can or use your speaking voice. Um, you don't necessarily have to sing to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now, I started out by saying he is risen. What a wonderful thought. But tonight is the first time we celebrate Pentecost. The day of Pentecost will be coming up this Sunday, but tonight we celebrate it as well. And the focus of our worship is that you can do this. And by you can do this, we're not talking about living in a world filled with a virus. But you can do this living in a sin-filled world. You can do this because Jesus returned to the Father and because the Holy Spirit is very convincing. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to follow the order of worship on page 52 of your hymnals. We begin with the first hymn, hymn 153. Come, let us worship the Lord. I will sing the first half of the congregational, uh, my, my half would ask you to please speak the second part. We begin. Oh Lord, open my 
Lord God, you've brought us safely to this hour of evening prayer. We thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us who have gathered in your name. Forgive our sins, speak to our hearts, dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word, and receive our hymns of thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our living Savior, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let our prayers be acceptable in your sight. Come and help us in time of need that we may sing your praise in holy joy, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 51b. That is on page 87 of your hymnals. We'll speak the psalm together. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord God, grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may hear and believe your word. Cleanse our minds and renew our hearts, that we may live for you here and hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our text for this evening is John chapter 16, verses 5 to 11. This will serve as our sermon text. But now I am going away to him who sent me, and not one of you asks me, where are you going? Yet because I have told you these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is good for you that I go away. 
For if I do not go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father. And you will no longer see me, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Alleluia. We continue our worship with hymn 183. Brothers and sisters, please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this evening is John chapter 16, verses 5 to 11. I'd like to read verse 7 for you again. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is good for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Dear fellow redeemed, are you familiar with hunting? Now. My guess is that just about everyone here is. But have you ever felt like you were the one being hunted? And when I say that, I'm not talking about cougars or wolves or coyotes, although those things it can actually be pretty frightening. What I'm talking about is Satan. You see, Satan would like nothing better than to see you mounted on his wall. And he will do anything. He will stalk you. He will try to trap you and snare you. He will do anything in his power to try to kill your faith. But you can do this. You can live in this sin-filled world. You can do this because Jesus has returned to the Father. And because the Holy Spirit is very convincing. Our text for this evening begins with Jesus rebuking his disciples. 
He's rebuking his disciples because they weren't asking, where are you going? Jesus was telling them that he had to leave them, but they didn't get it. You see, Peter and Thomas, they actually had opportunity to question Jesus farther, but they, they didn't follow up on it. Instead, they, they were lamenting the fact that Jesus was going to leave. He had been with them for the last three years. He had been with them preaching and teaching and doing miracles, but now, now they were sad because he was leaving. And they were grieved. They didn't get it. They didn't understand that it was for their own good that Jesus had to leave. Jesus had to go to the cross. He had to go to the cross so that he could pay for the sins of the world, so that he could complete the work of salvation that the Father had sent him to do. He had to go to the cross to pay for your sins and my sins and pay for them in full so that through faith in him, we are forgiven. The disciples would be forgiven. Anyone who has faith in Jesus would be forgiven because that forgiveness is there. They didn't get it, that Jesus had to go return to the Father it was the only way that he could send the Holy Spirit to them. He had to return to the Father so the Spirit would come, teach them all things so they would finally get it. They would understand, they would grow in their faith and their understanding of what Jesus had come to do and to give them the courage that they would need to be his witnesses, his tools, to spread that message of forgiveness throughout the entire world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, how does this apply to us? Wouldn't it be nice, we think sometimes, if Jesus still walked on the face of the earth? You know, we think to ourselves, that would be fun because if Jesus were here and he was preaching and teaching and doing miracles, Boy, then people would think twice before they persecuted a Christian. Or people would really think twice before they went and passed some law that obviously went against everything that God says in his word. If that's what you think would happen, you're kidding yourself. You realize that when Jesus walked the face of the earth, believers were still persecuted. And people still sin. They did sinful things. And Jesus tells us we can actually expect this. Now, yes, I realize it's tough. I realize it is tough out there. I realize that you're tempted to give up. You're tempted to give in. But don't. Because it was a good thing that the Father went Excuse me, a good thing that Jesus went to be with the Father. He went there so that he could send the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And he still does that today. He sends the Holy Spirit to his disciples, his learners, his students. To you and to me. He does it every time we hear God's word, every time God's word is read, every time we hear it, every time it is explained to us, the Holy Spirit is doing his work. He works in our hearts. He comes to us, strengthens our faith in our Savior Jesus, increases our understanding in God's plan of salvation so that we can be his witnesses his tools throughout the entire world, starting right here in Fairfax. The Holy Spirit brings us this, this increase in knowledge, this increase in faith, so that we can be his tools and you can do this. Because it's not you who does the heavy lifting. It's not you who creates faith in that person's heart. It's the Holy Spirit who does it. You and I, we just have the privilege of speaking the words, telling the person that their sins are forgiven through faith in Jesus. We have the privilege 
of sharing the message of what Christ has done for you and for me. So brothers and sisters in Christ, is the life of a Christian a piece of cake? Hardly. It's not. But you can do this. You can do this because Jesus returned to the Father. Returned to the Father because his work was completed and returned to the Father so that he could send the Holy Spirit. And you can do this because the Holy Spirit is very convincing. Now, returning to our text, when we read our text, there's a word that is translated as convict. But that word can also be translated convince. And that's, I guess you could say, the Holy Spirit does a little bit of both. You see, God wants all people to be saved. God wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to be in heaven. Now, the only way, let's say if you are sick, the only way you're going to go to the doctor is if someone convinces you that you're sick. The last time I went to the doctor, it was a, a, a teenager who had just got his driver's license. He says, Pastor, you should really get that looked at. I was coughing at the time. <laughs> you have to be convinced. And so the Holy Spirit convinces us of our sins so that we turn to Jesus and trust in him for the forgiveness of our sins. We realize that Jesus has what we need, that forgiveness. You see, it is a commonly held belief today that you have to have righteousness in order to be saved. It doesn't matter who you are, really, because maybe you've heard people talk like this. If there's a heaven, I'm going to be there because I'm a pretty good guy. You've heard that. I know you have. That's righteousness. That is self-righteousness, but it is righteousness. However, the righteousness that gets you into heaven is perfect. And the only perfect righteousness is that of our Savior, Jesus. So if a person rejects Jesus, then they have to stand on their own righteousness. And that's not going to work. They then stand convicted of their sin before the Father. So brothers and sisters in Christ, the Holy Spirit convinces us that Jesus' righteousness is ours. That Jesus gives us what God demands, that perfect, sinless life. And it counts as yours, it counts as mine. So that when God looks at you, he doesn't see our sins. He sees the perfect, holy life of his one and only Son. Holy Spirit convinces us of that and convinces us of the fact that Satan is defeated. Jesus crushed his power on the cross. He completed God's plan of salvation so that you are forgiven. Through faith in your Savior, Jesus' eternal life is yours. Satan has no power over you. The only people Satan has power over are the ones who place themselves under his power. So brothers and sisters in Christ, how does this apply to us? How strong are your convictions? Satan's going to try to get you to doubt. And he's got a lot of practice at it. Satan's going to try to get you to doubt. He's going to try to get you to think, oh, what you did, it's not so bad. It's OK. Worry about it, because times have changed. Times have changed, and, and this is just the way things are done now. And besides, if, there, if, there's a, you're, if anyone goes to heaven, you're going to go there because you're a great person. So what's well, a little hanky-panky here and there? No big deal. You do realize, of course, that when we listen to what Satan has to say, you're listening to a real loser. He is. 
He's the biggest loser there has ever been. Jesus defeated him. Defeated him and crushed him on the cross. And when he rose victorious over sin, death, and the power of the devil, he did that for you and me so we could be certain that he is defeated, Satan is defeated, and you are triumphant through faith in Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are all washed away. And you have that righteousness that covers you like a white robe so that when God looks at you, he doesn't see the filth of our sins. He sees only the righteousness of his son, Jesus. So you can do this. You can do this. You can be God's witnesses. You can tell others about Jesus. You can do this because it's actually the Holy Spirit. The, is, he's the one who does the work. He's the one who creates faith in the heart. You can do this because you are covered in the righteousness of Jesus. And if you ever lack for words, just tell people what Jesus has done for you. You don't have to get elaborate. Just tell them what Jesus has done for you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you can do this. Folks, I realize in this world, you're up against a lot. You have pain, suffering, and sorrow in this world, not to mention disease and diseases that we don't have cures for. But you're up against temptation. Temptation from Satan himself. Temptation from your old sinful nature. That is temptation that comes from inside. It's hard to run away from that. And you also have people who have placed themselves under Satan's control, whether knowingly or unwittingly. You can face temptation there too. But brothers and sisters in Christ, you can do this. You can do this because Jesus returned to the Father. He returned to the Father because he completed your salvation. Your sins are all paid for in full. You're forgiven. And you can do this because Jesus went there to send us the Holy Spirit, the one who strengthens faith and creates faith and he's the strength that you have when it's time to share your faith. You can do this because the Holy Spirit, he's the one who works through you. And he is very convincing. Brothers and sisters, I don't care what this world throws at us. I don't care if we can only worship at quarter capacity tonight. You can do this. Through faith in your Savior, Jesus, you can do this. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join together in the Song of Mary. Down the mighty from their thrones as the 
lifted up follow me he has filled the hungry with good things and the she has sent away empty he has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise made Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, you may be seated at the, wait, <laughs> okay, please remain standing, sorry. Uh, because we are not collecting the offering at this time, uh, the offering plates are in the back of the church. You are asked to, as the Lord moves you, to please give your offering on your way home. We continue then with our prayer. Uh, it is responsive prayer. Uh, I, we will speak both parts. I will speak my half and you may speak yours. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. In the closing hours of this day, hear us as we pray, O Lord, Lord for the well-being of people everywhere, for the growth of your church in all the world, and for the strengthening of all who serve and worship here, we pray, O Lord, Amen. Christ have mercy. For one another, young and old, for your blessings that come with every stage of life, and for joy in doing your will, we pray, O oh Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our public servants who work day and night to bring protection, justice, learning, and health to this and every place, we pray to you, O oh Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather and bountiful harvest, for clothing and food, for health of body, mind, and spirit, and for deliverance from all sin and every form of evil, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have gone before us, who have shared with us your good news, whose souls are now at rest in your heavenly kingdom, we give you thanks, O Lord. Thanks be to God. In thanksgiving for your many and varied gifts to us, we now commend ourselves to your care. Be our shield and strength, O Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, on Pentecost you sent your Holy Spirit to your disciples, and you continue to send him to your disciples today every time your word is read or heard. Strengthen our faith and use us to spread your message of forgiveness throughout the world. Bless, Lord, the marriage of Jordan and Rachel. Stay with them as the glue that binds husband and wife together and grant them many years together. Help them to learn and lean on your grace. Bless all who are graduating. Help them to use the difficulty of the pandemic and these unique circumstances to drive them to use their gifts to the glory of your name. Lord, we know this pandemic is not over, but we thank you for allowing us to come together again in your name. Now teach us patience and give us a willingness to obey the guidance of our governor and our government you have placed over us. And please bring this pandemic to an end. Continue to spare our community and help us all to glorify you in all that we do. Lord, in all things, your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Lord, we come to you with a prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In peace, Lord, you let your servant now depart according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, have prepared for every of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We close with our final hymn. You may be seated. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
and God's blessings to each and every one of you. Um, it is wonderful to be able to gather here and worship with you again. And I was afraid that when I preached the sermon, I was going to be preaching like this. So hi to everyone who's joining us on, on uh, Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, God's blessings to each and every one of you, but I was afraid I was going to, out of habit, be staring up at the camera instead of at all of you. Um, so God's blessings to each and every one of you. We want to say special thanks to everyone who made this possible. Uh, first of all, we thank our God. Uh, we thank our governor for uh, light loosening the restrictions so that we can gather. We thank our ushers, accompanists, altar committees, flower committees, cleaning and sanitizing crews, social media and communication staff, council members, technical crews, videographers, and they threw my name in at the end, but I'm always here. <laughs> All right. Uh, God's blessings to each and every one of you. Uh, you do have your bulletin. Uh, there are some announcements that are in here that are important. Um, I will be taking off fairly quickly here so that I can get home. I have to send out invitations so that people can actually join that Bible information class on Zoom. Uh, we are still doing that. Uh, some of the folks with children actually found out that works really well when you have kids. Um, you can have your Bible class at right at home and still keep an ear on your kids when they go to bed. So we're going to continue to do that. All right, uh, then tonight, because of some of the, uh, the restrictions and the way things will flow, uh, we would ask that you would please dismiss from the back to the front. Uh, and we would ask our ushers uh, if you would be willing to do that. Uh, you're asked to please uh, go outside where there's fresh air and uh, groups of 10 outside. Uh, that is what is recommended. I realize there are a lot of rules, a lot of to hoops to jump through. Let's be more than happy to jump through those hoops for the privilege of being able to gather together. It's really good to see you folks. God's blessings to each and every one of you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>